Hi, my name is Krista Ames and I work at Gallery One as the ceramics studio manager and instructor there. And if you're here today, you're probably here to see a video of how to make a clay bunny. So I'm going to show you how to make a clay bunny with the tools from your art to go kit. I've got one right here. And um, we're just going to go through and look at the supplies to start with. And hopefully you've done a little bit of research. You've looked at some bunnies online or seen some on some walks or in your neighborhood. And you've done a little drawing and thought about, uh, thought about what bunnies look like and how your bunny is going to look. If it's going to be sitting up or lying down, or maybe it's like lying on its side, uh, if its ears are up or down. So think about all those things. But don't get too hung up on it. As you make, you can always change your idea. Um, so in our kit, we have our sketchbook for doing our drawings and a pencil. We have our clay and our slip. And then we have this little roll of tools with our canvas that we can work on. Our, um, our skewer, which is good for writing and doing details into the clay, and as well as cutting with the point. Um, and then we have our brush for our slip and a popsicle stick that's a nice wood tool for moving the clay, um, which I'll show you. And then our fork, which is our scoring tool. All right, so. Uh, some other things that you might have around your house, you might just want like a cup of uh, regular water uh, and a sponge for maybe doing some smoothing. Um, but don't get your clay too wet. It can get a little, you don't want to give your clay a bath. It can get a little messy. Um, and then you might need um, just like other things around your kitchen. If you think it's going to be useful, try it out with the clay and see if it works. Um, that's what I do. And uh, make sure to wash your hands really well before you get started. And, um, and that's all I have for our preliminary instructions. So let's get to work. So our first uh, task will be creating our balls of clay from our large portion of clay. So we're going to separate our clay into three balls. So try and make them about the same size. It doesn't have to be perfect. If one's a little bit bigger, oh, thanks Amy for switching that over, sorry. So I've got three balls I'm making here. And this one's a little bit bigger, so I'm just gonna Take a little bit off it and put it on this other one. And then I'll take my biggest one and set it aside. Because it's always best to have a little extra clay. And I'm gonna set it, I'm also gonna set aside another one of mine because I don't want my clay to dry out as I'm working. So our next step, step two is we're going to create an opening. So we're gonna pat our ball, make sure it's nice and smooth, and then we're going to create an opening by putting our thumb into the clay. And um, we're gently pressing it into the clay and holding our ball of clay with our other hand. And then we're gonna leave about a quarter of an inch of clay at the bottom to form the base of the pot. If you accidentally pinch through the base of the pot, roll the clay into a ball again and start over. It's totally fine. Next is step three. And uh, we are going to be pinching the pot in step three. So using gentle pinching motions to thin out the walls of the pot, we're going to be pinching using a pulling motion with our fingers. It's hard to see because my hand's so big. 
but I'm just pinching and turning, pinching and turning. And I'm starting at the bottom of the pot because as your pot, as you pinch your pot, it's going to get bigger. And the bigger it gets, the harder it is to reach the bottom of the pot. So you're just slowly turning and trying to get the thickness of the walls to be about three eighths of an inch. So if that's hard to uh, think about, try and visualize that by maybe taking a ruler and measuring with your fingers, with your other hand, what three eighths of an inch is, and then try and close your eyes and see if you can feel your fingers uh, being that thickness. So we're pinching and turning, pinching and turning. And remember, we're smoothing as we pinch. Anytime a crack starts to form, you want to smooth that out. And so like I've got a crack here, so I'm going to smooth that out with my fingers and then just keep pinching and turning. And I'm going to come up to my rim and I'm not going to pinch my rim out. I want it to be a connection point for my other pinch pot because we're going to be making two pinch pots to create our body of our bunny rabbit. And so I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to, for my step four, sorry, <laughs> four, uh, we're going to be making our second pinch pot. So we'll be repeating steps two through three. So I will get my ball of clay out. I'm just gonna prep it by smoothing out all my cracks and patting it into a nice ball. And then I will be uh, creating my opening. So pushing my thumb into the clay gently and making sure I have a quarter of an inch still at the bottom. And then pinching all the way at the bottom with my fingers together trying to not make a ton of fingerprints. That's why you keep your fingers together while you're pinching and pinching and turning. And remember, this is a slow movement. So you're not pinching the clay, you don't to like hurt it. You're just pinching to move it a little bit at a time. So you can make a couple passes over the same spot while you're pinching and turning. <laughs> and then smoothing out any cracks that form and working all the way up to that rim, but not pinching the rim out. All right, we did it. We made our two pinch pots. So next um, we are going to be joining our two pinch bowls together. And how we do that is first, we just see if they fit. If one's a little bit bigger, let's say like, I think this one's a little bit bigger than this one, we can always pinch it out a little bit. Or if you don't wanna make it bigger, you can always squish it together a little bit to make it a little bit smaller. And then measure it against your other pot. And it's roughly the same, our rims are, so we will, do our next step, which is um, scratching and attaching, um, scratch, slip and attaching our rims together. So we're gonna start by just scratching the rim. And my scratch marks, um, I'm doing two different directions. So I'm not just, I really want to like rough it up. It's like Velcro. So you, can you see how rough that is? And then with Velcro, you have to have two sides, right? So we're going to scratch the other side up as well. And see how I've made one direction to start with? And now I'm going through and making a lot of tiny little X's. I have to go through the other way. Okay. So then we're ready for our slip and our brush. So I'll open my slip up. 
And if it has a little water on the top, just stir it up and get that water mixed in. And then you're just gonna paint that on real quickly. I kind of dab it on. If you paint it on too much, you kind of smooth out your nice rough scratching marks and that defeats the purpose of these scratch marks. So just kind of glob your slip on. And slip is a, um, it's basically the clay body that you're working with. It's the same material, but with more water in it. So it's watered down clay. And we like to think of it as a special glue that bonds two things together. So this process of scratching, slipping, and attaching, you're going to be using throughout this project anytime you want to attach a limb or an ear or a head. Any, anytime you attach clay to itself, you have to use scratching, slipping, and attaching. Otherwise, the pieces will fall off in the firing. So um, now that I have my slip, on my scratching marks, I'm ready to attach. So this part's a little bit tricky. So if you need a little help, ask someone to just watch with you. And we're just gonna very carefully push the two edges together. And see how I'm holding the pots on both sides and kind of like wiggling and my slip is oozing out of that crack. That's a good sign because that is means it is joining together. Those Velcro marks are knitting together. And now I'm just going around and squishing the clay together at that seam. I'm just kind of making it pucker like lips puckering out from the edge of my two bowls. All right, so now that I have this nice seam, I'm gonna go over it and sort of pull my clay back and forth with my wood tool. And I'm spreading the clay. And I'm basically like knitting or seaming the clay together. And don't worry if your body of your bunny isn't looking the way you want it to. Be, we're gonna work on changing the shape of our rabbits um, in the next step. So now I've got that nice. And if you want to really make sure it's good, you can even go over it with this and sort of scratch your seam together even better. I'm going two different directions and I'm trying not to push too hard so that um, my piece doesn't collapse. All right, so now I'm ready to take a little piece of clay. This is part of our next step, which is joining and smoothing. So we've been joining it together by working the clay back and forth. And now we're going to make this little earthworm thickness piece of clay enough to wrap around the ball. I've just um, taken some from our extra clay that's left. And I'm just going to lay this across and then start pushing it into our seam just to make sure it's nice and connected. We're just putting this nice fresh piece of clay and then, and then we'll start smoothing it out. So when you're smoothing, make sure you're smoothing out with your finger or down. And you can go down and up, down and up. The more you press in, the more your piece will collapse. So we're spreading the clay across and smoothing that out. Okay, now we are ready to move on to step seven. Oh my gosh, we are almost done and it doesn't even look like a bunny yet. <laughs> okay, so we are going to start to form our body. So bunnies are kind of like tiny potatoes with little heads and ears 
and uh, feet and on their body. So we're just gonna make a nice potato shape. So I'm just gonna pat my ball since it has um, air trapped in it, you can pat it with your hands very gently or if you have a wooden spoon in your kitchen, that's also a very great tool for paddling and shaping the body of your rabbit. And so as I'm doing this, I'm also just smoothing and I'm gonna make a bunny that is laying down. So I want to base my bunny now, because right now it's a little bit wobbly. So how I base my pieces, I decide where, what way it's gonna be. If I were going to do it upright, I would put it like this and maybe it'd have little legs right here and right here and a little head up here. So I'm just gonna base it because I want mine to be laying down and I'm gonna just tap it on the table so that it can't roll away. Okay, and then I can start to sort of smooth out and decide like maybe there's like some little legs here. So maybe there's a haunch that's there or this is where my head is going to be. So I'll make my neck start to form. And I'm just doing like little subtle movements with my fingers over the clay. And then here's where the back of the bunny is going to be. So I'm just gonna pull some clay down, sort of like pinching to make it look like there's, like I could add on to a tail back here and defining that back. And just doing a little bit of shaping before we add our head in. All right, so I've done a little bit of shaping. And if you don't wanna do shaping, if it's too hard, you can always just get straight to making the head. So now I'm gonna take what's left of my clay and I'm going to take maybe like half of it. I wanna make sure I have, or a little bit over half of it. I wanna make sure I have enough clay for my ears and any other features. So just keep this aside. Just think about how much clay you'll need for your ears. And then use whatever you, else you need for the head and the legs. So this is my clay for that. I'm gonna start by making my little legs so that I know how much clay I'll need. So I'm just gonna roll a nice thick coil and then I'm going to chop it into fourths. So you can either use this tool the skewer, or you could even use the popsicle stick if that works better for you. But I'm just gonna cut it in half. Ooh, I think popsicle stick is the winner. It's nice and thick. All right, and then I'm gonna cut it in half again to make my little legs that'll be popping out from my bunny that's laying down. So I've got these four little Tootsie Rolls. And then I'm going to start shaping them like these two can be my front ones. So I'm just shaping them so that they're rounded at the end. And I'm keeping this thick part at the back for my connection. So rounding that at the end. And then especially these ones I cut from the middle, they're, they're really a lot like Tootsie Rolls right now. So we want to make them look like little rabbit feet or bunny feet. So I'm just going to smooth that out. And maybe your posture of your bunny only has two of its legs sticking out. That's totally fine. I think mine might actually be like that. So, but just for the sake of all of you, I will attach all four of my little legs. So I'm going to line up where these are going to go. And you might need to like press and make it angled in to fit but you wanna make sure that they attach really evenly to the body. So if we look at it from the side, you can see how it connects onto the body. And remember, this isn't how it, uh, we're not gonna stop here. We're going to scratch and slip these on. So, and then maybe I wanna put my other legs like way sticking out here. Like maybe my bunny just fell down. It kind of like flopped down. All right. So now that I know where I'm going to put my feet, I of course have to scratch, slip and attach. So I'm gonna use this pointy tool and I'm just gonna trace around each leg. 
with it. I'm not going too deep into the clay, just tracing. And then I will remove each leg one at a time. And on or inside my tracing marks, I'm gonna scratch. And then I'll scratch what I'm attaching, which is my leg. And then I will put a little slip on each end. And then squish that on. And with squishing this on, you really want to make sure that you, you really push it in. You don't squish the clay thinner here. And then we're going to take our popsicle stick and we're going to smooth it into the body of our bunny rabbit. Okay, so then we'll do that with our other leg, other front leg. And we'll put some slip on each side. Squishing that in place. And smoothing that into the body of our rabbit. And then I think I want my back legs to be tucked in a little bit more. So I'm just going to cut a little extra clay off of them so that they're almost sticking out. So that means I need to retrace them. So if you make any adjustments, always retrace. And then I'll scratch. Slip and attach. And then smooth it in with your popsicle stick again. And you can go in and do a lot more detailing as you go if you'd like, or you can wait until um, we get to the detailing step. Okay, and scratching here. Flipping. and attaching. This is the part where we all get sick of scratching, slipping, and attaching. So make sure you really do get your legs on there and get them attached nicely so that you don't have any legs loss in the kiln. Okay, I'm just smoothing that in even on the underside. Okay, now we are ready to work on our head. So let's, I like get distracted doing more detail. <laughs> you can get distracted too. So let's get back to our clay that we have for that. And we can form a head. So I know it's really easy and simple to be like, okay, this is my clay for my head. But this big solid chunk of clay is going to be too big uh, and heavy for in the kiln. So what we're going to do is we're gonna start by making another pinch pot. So a third pinch pot. This one's gonna be smaller, obviously, and you might want even less clay than this. So I'm gonna take a little extra off because I don't want my rabbit, my bunny rabbit's head to be too big. And I'm going to put my thumb into the clay See that? And then I'm going to pinch and turn just like I did earlier. And this time I want, I don't want it to get too bold out. I'm just going to kind of pinch it in and then pinch it a little bit more with a, not my thumb inside, but another finger. So my thumb's on the outside and I'm just pinching it over a little bit. So I'm making a tall bolt. 
this is too hard or you can't make it work, just kind of squish the shape you want and put your thumb into it and then it's hollowed. And so we're going to be attaching our little heads to our baby bunnies. And maybe um, you'll need to cut away, like I need to cut away a little bit on mine. So I'm gonna think about where my nose is and how I want it to be positioned. And I'm going to like cut a little bit of clay off where the neck is just so that it can be angling down. And then I could even add that clay onto the back, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. This is gonna be our head. And since it's hollow, before we attach it, we're first going to trace where it's going. And then we're going to take it off and we're going to poke a little hole here and you can even, if you can get your little fingers in there or maybe use the tool, we can open this up and make the neck stand out a little bit. Or you can just poke the hole. But this will make it easy, it'll make a nice connection for your pinch pot going on there. So we're going to scratch all the way around this nice neck we've made, roughing it up all the way, going through it twice, and then scratching here on our rim. And maybe even inside a little bit, since we know we have this nice collar to attach to. And then we'll put our slip on. And put our slip here. And then attaching our head. So kind of, I like to wiggle the clay a little bit and then push it gently in so that I don't have any collapsing anywhere. And then I can go in with my popsicle stick and my extra clay here. And I'm gonna work the clay back and forth. And then I'm also going to roll this into a nice little coil after I scratch my neck up so that I have a nice transition from the body to the neck and the head. So it's like it's wearing a little scarf right now and then I'll smooth that in. And then make sure you get underneath at the bottom of the neck to get under there and get that connection nice and solid. Okay, so now we are ready to move on to the next step, which is ears. So we'll be making little ears for our bunny and then we'll be, uh, and then we'll do our features, all our extra little features in our tail. So with our clay that we have in here, I'm just gonna set my bunny aside so that I have a nice workspace for making ears. And I'm getting all my crumbs of clay out of the way so that they don't get into my clay. And I'm just going to smush the clay with my hand. And I want it to be about the same thickness as the body of my rabbit, so I don't want it to be too thin, like a nice uh, sugar cookie thickness. So, and think about how long you want your ears to be, and then we're going to use our pointy little skewer, and we're going to draw with it. I'm just gonna prop this up so you can see better. We're going to be drawing our ears in here and I like to make sure that I have a nice thick area at the bottom of my ear so that I don't have to 
worry as much about connection. And then I'm gonna make that connect there in the middle. And what I mean by connection is how it connects to your bunny rabbit. You wanna make sure that those ears don't fall off. So you're gonna make sure that you have a nice thick connection to your head. Okay, and all my extra clay is gonna go back in my bag and I'll save that for extra details like my tail. And then I've got this nice thick little uh, ear and I'm just gonna pinch my edges a little to make them look a little more natural. You know how the edges of a rabbit's ear are very thin. And then I'm gonna make them like curve over or you know, just make them however you want. Make them as tall or as short as you'd like. And so now I've got one done and I'll just do the next one, pinching my edges a little. But form it however you'd like. I'm kind of pushing mine more because I want it to be a little thicker now that I have it in my hand. And so I've got these two great bunny rabbit ears. And so I'll bring my rabbit back in this frame. And I'm gonna put these on and see how they look. They're a little too big, oh my gosh. So the beauty is you can always cut them down. And so I'm gonna cut one down and see how that looks. Oh, that looks much better. And then I'm gonna cut my other one down. Maybe I'll cut them both down together, standing on top of each other. Um, and, oh, but now I made two, two right ears. <laughs> so I've gotta turn one the other way. Okay, so now, we have our ears. I think that's a pretty good size bunny rabbit ear. Maybe they're, they're pointing back or maybe one's flopped over. Think about how the ears give a lot of personality to your rabbit. So we're just gonna turn this so that you can see me attaching it. And we will trace first where it goes. And then scratch. It's okay if your scratch marks go beyond. Flip. And attach. And then use your popsicle stick to get in there and smooth it into the head. Okay. And now we're going to do our other ear. And we are going to, oops, I forgot to trace. That's why I grabbed that tool first. So trace and then scratch. Slip. And attach. And once you have your ears on, if you still think they're too tall, you can always cut them down once they're on there. You can pinch a little extra clay off if it's looking like not exactly how you want. You can squish the ear down a little more and get that all figured out. So now we can start to define our head and our face and we're going to do all of our finishing touches with our last step, step 10. So I'm just going to smooth my ears in. I'm gonna get one ear down and one ear like that. 
and I'm going to go in and I can put my little like paw prints or um, toes of my bunny. I just add all the details you want to add kind of thing. We can add in a little clay for the nose. We can add some eyes onto our bunny with extra clay. Maybe we want to put some eyeballs on it. Remember, if you put eyeballs on, you have to scratch and slip them. Maybe you want to put more of a nose. I think I'm going to um, just put my eyeballs in like this, like draw them in. So you can sort of put an eye by poking a hole. And then I'm going to create my nose by adding a little clay in. I'm just scratching and slipping a little extra clay on to make my nose a little bit more defined. And then insetting my eyes a little bit. And then I can put my eyeballs in there. The other tool that's really good for scratching and slipping small pieces is this little wood tool. So we can scratch and slip our eyeball in. And scratch and slip our eyeball in again. And then you can always just go around and define some of those features in it. Okay. Now we can start to work on our tail. So we want a nice big fluffy tail on here, right? So we're going to add a little extra clay. Onto the back. And now we've got a nice little tail. And then the great thing about this fork is you can add like fur all over your little bunny. So you can put fur all over it and sculpt in all of that. Or maybe you want to put an overall pattern. So I'm just going to use my fork to make my bunny look fuzzy. And think about how hair doesn't all grow in the same direction. It'll kind of spiral around the animal. And then I'm also gonna just take a little bit of this clay off the side of my ears real quick 
just so that my ears stand out a little bit more. I'm gonna put my little fur here and there and bring it up the ears even. And down the face and on the chin. Or you can also leave your rabbit smooth. You don't have to do this. So I'm just going to call mine done soon so that you can keep working on yours and spend as much time as you need. But before, any, before we finish, I want to show you how to do noses so that we can sort of create our little nose here. So we're going to use our popsicle stick to go in and define our nose. And I like to push mine up a little. And then I'm also going to give it a little mouth. You can always just draw in your mouth as well. Have it going up to there. And then we'll put a little bit of hair on here. All right, and there is our bunny. Maybe it has two ears that are down or another ear that's down and up. So you can just keep playing with it and figuring out what's right for your bunny. And, but the, the last thing that I need you to do before we say goodbye is on the bottom of your piece, since your piece has a bunch of air in it, if you put this in the kiln and fire it, it could pop. So we wanna make sure that there's a, a hole for all of the air to escape. So we're just gonna pop our bunny by putting a little hole in the bottom. And then you can write your name. So I'm gonna write Krista. And then really important, I want you to write a number between one and three and not just any number, uh, you're going to be writing down what you're going to do for glazing your piece. So you can either put one, which is Bonnie's surprise, um, which is like a gray green color. So a nice gray bunny or two, which is tea dust. And that is a brown color or three, no glaze. You're going to paint it with paint afterwards. So write down which color you're going to do. I'm going to put a two on mine. And then I want you to circle that number. So there I have my name, I have a hole, and I have two with a circle around it. And I am ready to go to gallery one and drop my bunny off and put it on the shelf. All right. So um, if we could come back to my face. Um, Thank you so much for being a part of Gallery One's Art To Go. And I can't wait to see the bunny that you made. So come in and drop it off on the uh, greenware uh, to be fired shelf. And I will put it in the kiln and fire it once. And then I'll look at your number on the bottom. And according to that number, I'll put whatever glaze on it or no glaze and then I'll fire it a second time. So uh, thank you so much. And I hope you're enjoying uh, your day and I will hopefully see you sometime at Gallery One. Bye. <laughs> I have my table lifted with like those things that you put under a bed so that it's a better height. Well, I have wheels on mine, so I can't run. Oh, no, that wouldn't work. My chair is probably just too tall or something. It doesn't go down any further. Right? No. 
and there's like a shelf underneath so it's like an awkward place I feel like I'm perching all the time <clears throat> okay let me get this set up <coughs> Hey, you are spotlighted on.